Now I'd like to welcome you all to the channel or back to the channel depending on what it is for you and to let you know that throughout this year's Autumn International Series I'm going to be making pre-game shows for every single game that's 21 games and I'll also be doing a post-game show as well so looking at the teams and also what I expect of each of the games and then giving you my full detailed analysis after the game what I thought about the players how the game went and all the rest of my opinion so we've got an absolute avalanche of rugby coming up over the next few weeks folks so let's get into it talking about England versus the All Blacks today and a big game to start off this year's Autumn International Series. So we'll start off by going through the two teams first of all that have been selected to play in this game, the 23 for each team. And we'll start off with England, the hosts of this game, and look at their forward pack. And I'll give you my thoughts around the players that have been selected. So let's have a look at their front row, and they're gonna go with Genge, George, and Stewart. And I think Stewart's the one there that stands out for me. He's gonna to have to have a very big game I think the All Black front row is going to be targeting Will Stewart and uh, we're going to have to see whether he can really step up to this level because I think that's going to be an area where the All Blacks target. Moving on to the locks for England and we've got two fantastic locks as far as I'm concerned in Mario Etoje and George Martin. Perhaps two of the best locks going around in world rugby at the moment, these two. And if you remember back to the England-New Zealand series in New Zealand earlier this year, Itoje really imposed himself on the All Blacks and I expect him to do the same again. He's playing absolutely brilliant rugby this year, perhaps his best rugby in his career. And he caused the All Blacks a lot of issues in the lineouts down in New Zealand. So watch out for Itoje and Martin and their potential impact on this game. Okay, then another positional area that I'm going to be really interested in watching the battle is going to be the battle of the Lucys in this game. And for England, we're going to see Chandler Cunning himself. We're going to see Tom Curry, and we're going to see Ben Earl at number eight. A little bit surprising here. Sam Underhill's not in the mix for England. I thought he played really well against the All Blacks. He's an outstanding player. And I thought he's probably one of the ones that uh, England really need to have in this team to give them a chance against the All Blacks, but it's Tom Curry that's got the nod. And I know that a lot of England fans give Tom Curry a bit of a hard time, but I think he's a very good player. We're gonna to have to see how he goes in this particular game. Chandler Cunning himself usually comes on as a replacement, and it's gonna be interesting to see how long he lasts in this particular game. If England get a good 50 or 60 minutes out of him, it could be the job done. And I think also we're seeing this reflected in the bench that Steve Borthwick is putting out in this particular game. Ben Earl's very good at number eight, of course, and if you watched Artie Savia's press conference the other day, you would have seen him made mention of Ben Earl and how good he is on and off the ball. He really respects him, and we're looking forward to a very good battle there of the Lucys. So that's the, that's the uh, forwards for England that's gonna start the game. I think Will Stewart's probably the weak link, and I think that's where the All Blacks are gonna target the front row of this English team. Now let's have a look at the English starting back line for this game and probably no surprise to anyone that Ben Smith Spencer has got the uh, call up for halfback. We're going to see him in there. Marcus Smith at number 10, a 10 that can play 15 of course and uh, the big playmaker for England. So it's going to be interesting to see what the strategy is from England with Marcus Smith at number 10. Then the centre pairing was always going to be interesting for me against the All Blacks for this England team. Ollie Lawrence at 12, Henry Slade coming back in at 13. Of course, he's just returned to rugby after a layoff. And uh, it's going to be interesting because he brings a lot of experience. But is this the right combination for England in the midfield? Well, time will tell on Saturday. But I think this could be an area where the All Blacks also target. And then moving on to the wings for England, and we've got two very good wingers indeed, and Tommy Freeman and Faye Waboso, and expect these two guys to really put the All Blacks outside defence under some pressure. We've seen how Faye Waboso can break open a defensive line and create opportunities for this England team. Expect him to have a go in the weekend if he gets some ball out there. At fullback, we've got George Furbank, and what a great player he's turning out to be, and of course, keeping Freddie Stewart out of this team, amongst others, for England. So, a very good back, back uh, line for England. Some interesting elements that I'm going to be watching here is Marcus Smith. When he's on his game, he can be as good as anyone in the world, but when he's off his game and causing some problems for the England back line, 
things can go array for England, but we'll have to wait and see what happens because they do have a backup solution on the bench. And talking about benches in this game, well, Steve Borthwick's gone for the 6-2 split in this game. Very interesting. And I think a little bit of that has to do around the way that England performed in New Zealand earlier this year. They fell away a little bit towards the end of those games and gave the All Blacks an opportunity to cling on and win those two games. Of course, those games could have gone either way. But I think Steve Borthwick is looking for a stronger final 20 minutes from this England team. And I think by going in with a 6-2 split in the bench, he's asking his players to really put that momentum in in the last 20 minutes. So let's have a look at who is on the bench for England. And in the forwards, we've got the front row replacement of Dan Baxter and Cole. Finn Baxter, of course, the babyface assassin who came on in New Zealand and made a very good stand for himself. So it's great to see him back in this team again and getting another opportunity. Let's see how he goes coming on with that replacement front row. And then the other three replacement forwards we're going to see coming off the bench, Isi Skouar and Ben Curry and Alex Dombron. So as I said, Steve Borthwick has really muscled up on the bench, wanting to see a big impact in the last part of this game. And if it is a close game, this could be one of the reasons that England get over the top of New Zealand. Then looking at the replacement backs for England in this game, Harry Randall and George Ford. So George Ford, of course, with all that experience that can come on and cover 10 or 15 or any other position really in the back line. And it'll be interesting to see what Steve Borthwick does with him and Marcus Smith. Are we going to see them into playing at different times in that back line in the second half? We'll have to wait and see for that one. Interesting strategy from Steve Borthwick, a 6-2 split in this one. Also, another interesting strategy, four vice captains named in this particular team for England. I'm not too sure what that's about. He must have consulted Joe Marler about that one before he decided to do that. Just before we kick on with the video, I just wanted to let you know that I'd love your support in any way you can help me out. Many of you might know that uh, I'm a retired Kiwi bloke. I decided to make this YouTube channel in my retirement as a hobby and to also see if I could play a small role in helping the great game of rugby to grow across the world. That's why I started this channel just over a year ago now. And uh, if you look at these things on the screen, these are ways that you can help me out to grow my channel and to take rugby to new areas of the world, perhaps where people aren't watching the game at the moment, or they're just starting to and getting into it. I just wanna share my passion for the great game and that's why I'm doing this journey on YouTube. So if you can select one or more of these things to help me out on that journey, I would really, really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's have a look at the All Black team now that uh, Scott Robertson has named to play in the first game of the Autumn International Series against England. And we'll have a look at the forwards first of all. And in the front row, we're seeing Tamaiti Williams come in which is fantastic for him. He's been playing really well this year. If you've watched any of my videos on the All Blacks, you'll know that I've been talking him up and I'm very, very impressed with the way that he plays. So it's going to be Williams, it's going to be Cody Taylor, and it's going to be Tyrell Lomax in the front row. And I think this is going to be an area that the All Blacks really target against England. I just mentioned it. I think Will Stewart is probably the weak link in the front row for England. And I can see this All Black front row putting a lot of pressure on the English front row. Moving on to the locks for the All Blacks, and we're going to see Scott Barrett, of course, the captain of this All Black team at the moment, and Tupo Vai, who's been playing sensational so far this year for the All Blacks. And I don't think Scott Robertson had any option other than put Tupo Vai in the starting forwards for this particular game against England. Moving on to the back three, and we're starting to see a little bit of settled selection here for the All Blacks back three. And of course, they've been hit by injury with some of their Lucy still at home in New Zealand. But we're seeing Wallace Satiti at number six. We're seeing Sam Kane at number seven. And we're seeing Adi Savia in number eight. We saw Wallace Satiti move to eight against Japan last weekend. But let's face it, this young man can play in any position in the back three. And coming in at six, expect him to have another big game. Sam Kane is in there for his experience, of course, but also he's been playing good rugby lately for the All Blacks. Expect him to have a good game. And I think the loose trio battle in this game is going to be exceptionally good to watch. So keep your eye on it, that's for sure. Now moving on to the All Black back line, and it pretty much picked itself, I think, before we came into this game. Cortez Ratama at halfback has been playing 
probably the best of all the halfbacks this year so far as far as I'm concerned. So he deserves a start in this game. Bowden Barrett appears now to be the number 10 choice for Scott Robertson. I don't agree with it, but a lot of you know why. And the reason for that is that I think we should be using new number 10s to get this experience as we start to head to Rugby World Cup. But I think Scott Robertson wants to end 2024 with as many wins as he can get. And he sees Bowden Barrett at number 10 as being the first choice at the moment. Outside him, Geordie Barrett, his brother, returns from injury. So that's going to be interesting to see how his fitness goes in this particular game. So the Barrett boys will be playing outside of each other on this particular occasion. Moving outside in the centres, it's still Rico Ioane for all of those that have been calling for change in this position. Ioane's in there again and we'll have to see how he goes in this game against England. Moving out to the wings and we're going to see Caleb Clark. Of course, he's picking himself in that number 11 jersey pretty easy these days. And it's going to be Mark Talia on the other wing. And I've also made my comments about Talia over this season so far. I don't think he's the right guy for that wing. But with Scott Robertson putting Will Jordan at fullback for this game and starting to look like he's going to play Jordan in that position going forward, Mark Talia is going to get a start on the wing in this particular game. So that's the All Black backline to start this game. Now let's have a look at their bench that they've selected. Now unlike Steve Borthwick, Scott Robertson has decided to go with a 5-3 split on the bench and the front row replacements are going to be Asafo Amua, Tuanga Fussy and Tossi, which is great to see for the All Blacks. Tossi's really deserving his opportunity and he's also a big boy that can come on and make an impact as is Amur as well. So I think this is starting to look good for the All Black bench in the front row. And then the other two replacements from the bench for the forwards for the All Blacks, we're going to see Patrick Tui Pelotu, who played outstanding, I thought, against Japan. His leadership was great, but his ball skills, his general play was exceptional. His defense was good as well. And uh, great to see Patrick back into this All Black team. And I'm sure he's going to make a big impact when he comes off the bench. And then the last forward off the bench for the All Blacks is going to be Sabini Finau. And it's going to be great to see him getting another go. He played well, I thought, against Japan. But he's got to really prove himself now against the big boys. And he's going to get an opportunity with Steve Borthwick calling a 6-2 split on the bench for England. Finau, Finau is going to have to come on and really make a difference for the All Blacks. So now looking at the reserves of the backs for the All Blacks coming off the bench, and we've got Cam Roygaard, who of course, who's just coming back into the fray for the All Blacks. We've got Anton Leonard-Brown, and we've got Damien McKenzie on the bench, and this is a good move, I think, for the All Blacks. A lot of you have been uh, giving me a hard time about my love for McKenzie, but I think he's found his right place, and I think Scott Robertson is now agreeing that he needs to come off the bench and make the impact in the last 20 or 30 minutes of the game. So I am happy to see Damian McKenzie on the bench for the All Blacks in this particular game. Let's see how Cam Roygaard also goes. He could be another that comes on, makes a difference with his sniping little runs in the second half. Very, very dangerous. And I think if Anton Leonard Brown is going to be in this team for the All Blacks, it needs to be off the bench. So I'm happy for the first time with this All Black backline off the bench. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go. And as we've seen in most of the games so far for the All Blacks this season, they haven't been faring too well in the last 20 minutes. So I hope it's a step up in this particular game. Well, there's a few things to say in this area. And if we go back to the encounters that we saw in New Zealand and Dunedin and Auckland earlier this year, we saw a very close battle between England and New Zealand and I think the reason we saw a close battle was that this New Zealand group was only 10 days into their tenure they hadn't had a lot of opportunity together they hadn't worked out their game plan and since then well they've had 10 test matches together and I think that's going to be a telling statistic in this particular game against England also at Twickenham the New Zealand All Blacks have a 73 percent win record against England so odds on, they've always got a good chance of beating England at Twickenham, and that's been the case over the years. Now we saw two very close games in New Zealand, and I think the All Blacks have learned a lot from that. I think they're gonna bring a different strategy to this game. And if you watch those games in New Zealand, New Zealand decided to play a lot of their playmaking from the number 10 position. And I think that's gonna change in this particular game. And the reason for that is, it's gonna nullify the English rush defense if they decide to play that way. We saw in Dunedin in particular, 
Damien McKenzie being caught on a couple of occasions by getting the ball out wide and the English defence was already up on the, the opponents of the New Zealand All Blacks in the defence and it stifled the New Zealand runners from really getting away from the English defensive line. I think if we see Ratama doing more from number nine and setting up plays, we're going to see more of an open free game for the All Blacks. And that's going to allow Bowden Barrett more time to be able to get Geordie Barrett and Rico Ioane away. So watch out for how the All Blacks play this game, whether they play it from number nine or number 10. That is going to be a decisive factor, I think, in the outcome of this particular game. So I think another important area of this game is going to be general kicking and in New Zealand we saw the All Blacks I think making mistakes in this area. They were kicking open in the field which was giving the English defence time to get the ball and have counter attacks opportunities and we saw some great runs from Furbank and the back three from England. So in this game I think the All Blacks need to keep the ball close to the outside channels where the defensive winger or fullback are caught with the defence coming up from the All Blacks and this is going to give the All Blacks an opportunity to counter ruck and try and win these turnovers to get their backs away quickly rather than giving England the big opportunity for counter attacking so watch out for general kicking in play this is going to be a very important part of this game another thing that's going to be very important is going to be discipline of course I talk about this in most of my videos but it's becoming a very important part of all test matches these days when teams keep all their players on the field, they obviously have a distinct advantage. But it also comes down to when you keep trying to get points and keep the scoreboard ticking over. So if you're giving away a lot of penalties and your discipline is falling away, then you're giving the, team, the opposition an opportunity to put points on the board. And I think this is a great area of opportunity for England in this game. We've seen the All Blacks struggle a little bit this year when they've been put under pressure. And that pressure can turn into points for England, particularly if they've got some good territory. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a mixed game from England where they're using their kicking to their advantage to get territory, to get down in the All Blacks half and to try and put pressure on to score points. I don't think England will be too worried about how they win this game. They just want to get enough points to do so. So by playing smart, putting the All Blacks under pressure in their own territory and trying to get some penalty kicks, that might be a good way to go. But don't underestimate this England team. They've also got the flair and the ability and the skills out wide to be able to score tries. And I think that's something that Steve Borthwick might be trying with this England team if they can get any measure of good ball from their forward exchange against the All Black forward. So that's going to be another area that we need to watch in this particular game. Now I mentioned it when I was talking about the team selections that the battle of the Lucys is going to be epic. We've seen Wallace Satiti for the All Blacks have a standout season so far for the All Blacks and watch out for him because not only in general play with his great runs and offloads but he's doing some really good work in the line out at the moment. So the All Blacks now have another option at the back of the line out and it's Wallace Satiti. So look out for that because I'm sure with Mar Maro Itoje and George Martin They'll be trying to nullify Tupo Vai and Scott Barrett in the lineouts, but the All Blacks do have another option, and we'll have to see it. Patrick Tuipoloto is another option when he comes on as well for the All Blacks. So I think the All Blacks have filled a gap that they had previously when they played England, and that's something that England haven't seen yet. So let's watch out how that goes. But I think the Battle of the Lucys is going to be very good. I think these England three on their day, if they're playing at the top of their game, they can be absolutely outstanding and I think Sevilla, Kane and Satiti are going to have their work cut out but I think they can come out on top. So it could well come down to the last 20 minutes again in this game. We saw what England did against Ireland last year by snatching that drop goal from Marcus Smith in the last second of the game to win it. If England are going to win this game that's what I think might need to happen for them to do so. A last minute bit of heroics from someone, whether it be Marcus Smith or George Ford with their boot. I think that's the only way the English team will get over top of the All Blacks. So what does it come down to for me? Well, I think there's a big difference in this particular game and that is the All Blacks have had 10 test matches since they last played England. And I think that at the end of the day is going to be the difference. I'm picking the All Blacks to win this game, but only by no more than five points. On all the occasions these two teams have played in recent history, it's always been very close, and I expect it to be the case again in this particular game. 
England will be very buoyed in front of their Twickenham home fans and they'll rise to another occasion I'm sure in this first game of the Autumn International Competition and expect them to go helter-skelter for the whole 80 minutes. I think the 6-2 split is a really good creative idea from Borthwick to try and give them the opportunity to win this game and we'll have to see how they go in the last 20 minutes. So watch out for the impact of that bench for England. But I think the All Blacks might have too much on the scoreboard by that point of the game. But as I say, I think it's going to be a really close one. Another point of difference in this game is the All Blacks' ability to score tries from nowhere. The likes of Jordan, Jordan Caleb Clark, Cam Roygaard coming on can be really dangerous and of course Damien McKenzie coming on in the last 20 minutes when he's up against a tiring defence can really make the difference and if Bowden Barrett can get through a gap then he can put either Geordie or Rico Ioane away for an outstanding try as well. So I think the All Blacks firepower when it comes to scoring those incredible tries from nowhere that could be a point of difference in this game as well. So I'm super excited about this one, game one in the Autumn International Series, England versus the New Zealand All Blacks at Twickenham on Saturday. Joe Marler is going to be sitting in the crowd watching this one because he's no longer part of the England outfit. And we're going to have an absolutely fantastic haka and game coming on. So make sure you watch it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts first about the team selections, whether you're from England or New Zealand or in neutral rugby fan let me know in the comments what you think of the selections has Scott Robertson really got it right this time or are there still a few positions you're not happy with let me know about that and then also let me know what you think is going to happen in terms of the outcome of this game I love reading all of your comments so make sure you keep them respectful and they will stay on the channel's page if they are not respectful they will be removed Okay, well I'm going to be back after this particular game with a post-game show, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. And of course the other game this weekend, we've got Scotland against Fiji. Look out for my video previewing that game and I'll go through all the details for that one as well. Okay, well that's it for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching my videos, for supporting the channel. I'll see you again really soon here on Inside Rugby with Mark. Until next time, it's time to say adios from me. Bye for now.